why people should care about politics. Because policies impact your life. If you think about, uh, there's a chart that just came out for Wall Street Journal that showed the plus minus of all states, okay, on what's happened pre-COVID to now. Okay, so go from March of, you know, to 2020 mm -hmm. till today. What's yeah. the plus minus? The state that got the most people that moved to it was Florida. Then it was Texas. Then it's a couple other states after that. The state that lost the most people mm -hmm. was California. Yeah. Then it's New York. Yeah. So why do people leave California? Why do people leave New York? Illinois, where I'm from. Why, why do people, that's right, you, yeah. Illinois is top five as well. Yeah. Why do people from Illinois move to Texas? Why do people from California move to Texas and then to Florida? What is it? It's policies. If it wasn't for the policies, people would have stayed in New York. If it wasn't for the policies, people would have stayed in California. If it wasn't for the policies, Elon Musk would have never moved to, you know, Austin. Austin's weather is not as good as LA's weather. <laughs> Where he was staying at in LA, it's 10 times be better weather-wise than it would be in Austin. Yep. But you have to pay attention to policies because uh, fortunately and unfortunately, policies can directly and indirectly impact your life both positively and negatively. A great policy can change your life positively. A negative policy can totally ruin your life. Right now, kids are going to school in LA and they got masks on. Yeah, right. What do you mean kids are going to school? A five-year-old has no clue about what it is to put a mask on. Right, a four-year-old right. doesn't even know what it is. Like trying to get Jordan to keep a mask forget on on a flight, it. forget Zero. about it, right? Yep. So imagine these policies, what are these kids thinking about? Yeah, um, yeah so I would tell you, you gotta pay attention to it early on because long-term it's eventually gonna impact, especially if you have big plans of being a big person, like yeah. winning, making a lot of money, being successful, you have to pay attention to policies. I remember when I was younger, I always loved free things. Free stuff, give it to me, right? And if you have politicians out there saying, hey, give me free things, I'll give you this, yep. free college, yep. healthcare, blah, 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 blah. What's the danger in, the, in saying, okay, let me vote for a candidate that's gonna give me a lot of free things from the government, and the government gets yeah. to be larger, and more impactful in their life? Yeah, so one of the most, if you, if you have big dreams, okay, think about if you have big dreams. If you don't have big dreams, forget about it. If you don't have big dreams, you don't have dreams, you don't care about your dreams becoming a reality, take all the free things. Yeah. But if you have big dreams, one of the fastest way to have something come in between you and your dreams is somebody that makes your life easier on you, not tougher on you. I understand the need for an unemployment check for 90 days. I totally get it. You, you got 90 days mm -hmm. to go get a job. You know, my policy would be slightly different. I would say, how yeah. much money were you making at your job? Yeah. $5,000 a month. How much are we paying you in unemployment? $2,500 a month, no problem. How many hours were you working at your job? 40 hours a week. I want you to give 20 hours of community service because we're giving you free money for yeah, 2,500 yeah. bucks. Give us 20 hours of community service. Like this, that person's gonna get a job and they're not gonna sit on the sidelines yep. just collecting those checks. So, you, you even said in one of your podcasts that why not a drug test on top of that? Why not a drug test? You know, why not any of this stuff? Because the, the, the ugliest word today that I didn't like, that most people don't like, most of us don't like, is accountability. We hate accountability. It's a boring word. There's, there's nothing sexy about accountability. But it, every time I leveled up in life, uh -huh. it was a byproduct of I had more people to be held accountable to. It, the lower the level I was in life, uh -huh. the fewer people I had to be held accountable to. When you're an 18-year-old kid, who are you accountable to? Nobody. Yeah. You go into the military, what's your level of accountability? Squad leader? you know, captain, you know, you got the company, you got the first sergeant, you got all these guys. That accountability teaches you on how to deal with that. So when you come outside of a military, you're going into a business structure, you're like, okay, I can handle this. But accountability is unattractive to most, but necessary for all. And uh, unfortunately, you know, when you're looking at what's going on right now with all these free things being handed out, what automatically goes out the window is accountability. Here's free money with no accountability. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that.